Well, well, well. What up, gang? Mr. Chris Conception. You asked the question that everybody else been asking. Everybody else wants to know, why did I leave Hornady? In Norfolk, Virginia. Remember, my, if you see my other videos, see I, now I got two blue tarps. I picked it up. It's preloaded, it's pre tarp All I had to do was tighten up straps, put more bungees on it. I picked this up from a company called National Gypsum. What's, what's funny about that, what's funny about that, and I got a whole lot of dunnage. I was like, hell yeah. I only had like six boards on my truck. That's my girl's car. I'm, that's what I'm driving today since I'm at the house. Little mom and pop gas station. The house is literally like, if y'all see that train, see that train moving? The house is like right over, right over those train tracks. I'm about to get ready to head out and uh, go get a haircut. See, my hair is kind of matted down right now because, you know, I had that hoodie on. But anyway, yeah, this National Gypsum place. When I was on a dedicated route at Hornady, um, I was I was running dedicated for National Gypsum out of Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, they had me on a percentage system. It was a percentage system. Now, okay, if the load is only paying $1,000, I'm getting 27%. That means I'm making $270 grossing off that load. So it seems like if I can run maybe $3,000 loads every day or even two, then I will make some pretty good money. But that wasn't the case. I was, on, I was running loads that were only paying like $600 to the truck. And my 27% of that I couldn't do the math right now, you know. 27% of 600. So I'm pretty sure, you know, not every load was paying 600. Maybe some paid 600. Maybe some paid 800. Maybe some paid 500. <laughs> the only way that that, that will be worth, I'm, I'm about to head in here and get some coffee before I head out. The only way that would be worth my time or anybody's time the, the run for, for that, those loads, is if you were running like three or four loads a day. Man, sometimes I run one load a day. One load. <laughs> I mean, but I wasn't bitching about it because, you know, I had a lot of shit going on at home, so I had to handle all my personal issues as well, so I really wasn't bitching about it. I'm going to run in here and get some coffee, and when I get in the car, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more. A tenderloin and egg. Tenderloin and egg, sausage biscuit. Well, no, tenderloin and egg biscuit and uh, some coffee. There's the PNS. Look at that bag hanging off the band, back of that trailer. Cause they got poly wrap under that tarp. But I'll fix that before I get back on the road. Let me show y'all something real quick before I hit the road. After I eat this biscuit, I'm gonna get the goddamn Excuse me for saying the, the GD word. Check this thing out I got. It's called a power. Y'all ever heard of that? Power uh, fast charging. I got it mounted in my truck too, but I got it mounted on the uh, vent inside the truck, but this is the windshield mount. Man, this thing is pretty cool, man. You just, um, matter of fact, let me show you. Let me put my other phone in there so you'll see it. All oh, this shit hanging up, that's my girl shit. Look. That's my other phone. You just slide your phone in there and it, and it holds it. It's not it's not charging now cuz her car won't charge unless the key is on, I guess. But uh yeah, you just you just put your phone in and and, and that's it. Man, I that's how I keep my phones charged. Cuz this phone will charge wirelessly and the iPhone will charge wirelessly. So while I'm while I'm about to ride and, and give y'all this next little part of the interview, my phone is gonna be vertical, so it's gonna change on YouTube. But yo, check this out. It's called a power uh charger mount. I think it was like 
I want to say it's about $40, but it's pretty cool though. So it's 8.14 right now. I'm headed to the barbershop, like I was saying. And like I was saying earlier, Hornady already had me on a, a dedicated account out of Wilmington, North Carolina. When I first got, when I, when I was in orientation, you know, I was trying to, I, I, didn't, I didn't know what I was going to be doing at first. When I was in orientation, you know, I was asking questions. They were saying it was a brand new account they had. You know, they just started it. So, so from, from the way I was looking at it, and, and I'm not saying nothing bad about Hornady because this, that job didn't work for me, but maybe it might work for someone else. So, um, yeah, the, the, the recruiter was like, yes, yeah, dedicated account. You'll be pulling loads. Maybe you might pull t uh, two or three loads a day, maybe four. Uh, weekends, you're going to be um, – you're not going to be pulling dedicated loads, but you might pull like a regional run and run over the weekend and stuff like that. So, you know, I had high hopes going in, like, yo, I'm going to make some money doing this. But once I started doing it, I realized I was only getting like one or two loads every day that really weren't paying that much. And then when I talked to my dispatcher about running on the weekends, he was like, well, I don't know if I can get you a run on the weekend because we're going to have to run you out somewhere then you're gonna to be too far out to dead head back. And he was like, so I, don't, I, I would have to check in on that. So I didn't really argue about it. I was like, all right, whatever. And uh, see, I had just came from Melton being over the road like four or five weeks at a time. So I was like, okay, it is what it is. So pretty much on that dedicated route, I was home almost every night out of that week. The only time I wasn't home was when I had to when I had a run that was maybe like 200 miles out that I had to de deliver at 7 a.m. So yeah, of course I would go ahead and leave out that night and sleep at wherever I had to deliver at. So you know I wouldn't waste too much time off my clock. So that was pretty much it. So my biggest check at Hornady was my orientation check. That was my biggest check. Thousand dollars for orientation plus my first load that I did out of Birmingham and Wilmington which was like, I made like $200 off of that. So once they took the taxes, my check was like $950. That was the biggest check I had. Other than that, all the checks I had at Hornady were like between seven to 800. So, I mean, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't where it's at, man. For, for a truck driver that's, you know, maybe been driving for a while and he wants to be home every night, that, that, that would be the kind of job for someone like that. So I ended up talking to someone at Hornady and I was telling the guy that uh, I wanted to go ahead and go back over the road. So they put me back over the road. The thing with being over the road, being over the road ain't worth it unless you're gonna run more than 2,500 miles a week. I was getting 46 cents a mile. At Melton, I was getting 45 cents a mile. I was getting 46, so that's only one cent more. Uh, it ain't too much of a difference, but the way some people might want that because you're still going to be able to get home more often than you would at Melton. Melton, you're going to stay out four or five weeks. Hornady, you want to go over the road, uh, depending on where you live, you can be home every weekend or every other weekend. So I was every other weekend. So that first week I went over the road, I, I already saw that I wasn't getting no miles. Like, 600 mile run delivered two days later. Like, damn, I can run 600 miles almost in a whole day. So, two days run 600 miles. That's 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 not even testing me. Like, I'm out there fucking. I'm out there cruising in a in a Peterbilt. It's running 75. I'm out there cruising, taking my time to get there. The thing that got me, the thing that really pushed me on out, was when I got a 500 mile run from Friday to deliver on Monday, 500 mile run. I, I, I was like, oh, hell no. If you're gonna run me over the weekend, I need to at least run like 1,200, 1,300 miles, 500. That ain't, when you get mileage paid, man, that's nothing, man. So that's really what pushed me out, man. And then I was talking to one of my buddies from Melton, Aaron, Aaron Meisenhower. I was in orientation with him at Melton. 
he just called me out the blue one day. I was uh, riding through Charlotte, heading up. I was headed somewhere. I think I was going to, I think I was going to Ohio. But I was driving through Charlotte and he called me. And he was just talking to me, chopping it up. You know, I was, what's going on, man? Uh, I seen your YouTube video. I seen you was at Hornady. Uh, he, and he told me that he left, he left Melton. And I was like, where you going, man? He was like, man, I went over to PNS. And I was like, um, I was like, man. I was like, I heard about PNS, but I didn't think that they were gonna hire me because I didn't have enough experience. Because you're supposed to have one year experience and then six months flatbed. So this is April. This is going into my six month of, of flatbed right here. But I still don't have one year experience. I was like, man, they're not gonna hire me. And so uh, he was like, uh, I'm gonna give you this guy's number. I want you to call this guy and talk to him. And I was like, okay. So uh, he gave me the guy's number. The guy that recruited him, I called the guy. The guy was like, uh, asking me, asking me about my background and stuff like that. And, and um, I told him everything. He was like, okay, I'm gonna send you an application. I want you to fill it out and I get back with you. So I'm like, okay. So the guy sent me the application. I filled the application out the same day. I filled it out. When I got to the truck stop, I stayed at the Flying J, right at the bottom of 77, right before you go up Fancy Gap. That's where I stayed at that night. I went ahead and filled the application out. And then another thing y'all don't know about me too, y'all might look, y'all looking at, oh, he's a new driver. He was only in Melton for six months. Another thing y'all don't know about me is, back in 2007, I'm 33 years old. Back in 2007, before they had YouTube, before YouTube, iPhone X, YouTube truckers, before all that stuff. <laughs> I used to work at a warehouse called Dubo Strapping. I worked in a warehouse. Well, Dubo Strapping was was the the place, but they had a warehouse on the, on the opposite side of town from the actual production plant. They make steel strapping, steel banding. They hire flatbed drivers too for local. But uh, I used to work there back in 2007. And um, they had a they had a guy that drove the truck back and forth between the warehouse to the main plant. And uh, since I worked in the warehouse, uh, a lot of times I used to have to ride with the guy. Like I I, I put my forklift on the back of his truck. It was a dry van too. I put I, I put my forklift on the back of his truck, and then I drive it to the uh, well. He would drive, and I ride over there, and. When we get there, I, I get my forklift out. I go in, the, go in the warehouse, load up whatever he needed to get loaded on the truck, and then we'd go back. But uh, one day, one day the guy didn't come to work, and um, yeah, he he the, the guy used to let me back his truck up sometimes uh, at the warehouse. He let me back up because I I don't know I wasn't even interested in being a truck driver at that point in time, but I used to talk to him about it. And so sometimes he used to let me practice back in his truck up. Um, it was only like a, maybe like a five mile across town, like five miles. So um, yeah, so they, the people at the company, they knew that I could drive the truck because the guy used to let me drive it around the yard. I used to drive it around the yard and drop trailers and move empties and move loaders and stuff like that. So I decided that I was gonna go get my CDLs. So I went and got my CDLs back in 2007. And I worked for that company for about a year. Not even driving over the road, just you know, driving back and forth across town, stuff like that. But I, I still had to go through the same procedure. I had to get a DLT physical. Uh, I, I got my CDLs through the DMV, so I, I had my CDLs. So, I, so I, I do have, like when they pull my MVR, that's, that's on my record that I had that experience. But, when I started working at my other job, Smithfield Packing, I, I felt like I was gonna be there for the rest of my life, so I pretty much gave my CDLs up. Like, when it came time to renew it, I just never renewed it. I was like, yeah, I don't need it no more. So that's why when I came back this time, I had to go through that refresher course uh, when I went to Melton. So that's why, you know, a lot of y'all feel like, you know, I'm, some of y'all might think that, but yeah, I, I, I been had my CDLs for a while. So, 
I did I did the application with PNS. They called me back the next day. They was like, um, hey, I got you approved. He was like, the only thing I'm waiting to get back is your uh, drug your drug test for Melton. And I was like, okay. I was like, I just took a drug test at Hornady. I was like, I passed that one. He was like, yeah, I understand that, but company policy, you know, we got to get your drug test results back. But um, it wasn't it wasn't nothing really holding it up other than the fact that the person that was supposed to send him the information from Melton, they weren't in, they, they weren't in the office or something. And he was like, somebody told him that they was going to give him a call later and send it back. I was like, okay, cool. So later on that day, uh, he called me back. He was like, yeah, I got your drug test results back. He was like, yeah, you're good to go. The only thing you got to let me know is uh, when to um, when you want to start orientation. And I was like, at that point in time, I was still, uh, I was up in Ohio somewhere. And I was like, okay, I'll let you know. Just my luck. Just my luck. The next day, when I dropped my load off at Hornady, I got a load picking up in Chicago. Guess where I was delivering to? Birmingham, where PNS orientation was at. I was like, whoa. Then I then I had some. Hey, shout out my other dog, TD the Trucker from Little Rock. I had I had a lot of conversations with this guy, man, and he gave me a lot of good advice. He, he should have his own YouTube channel, man. That guy's smart. He said he's been driving since like 06. Yeah, TD the trucker, one of my homies, man. Yeah, I had a lot of conversations with this guy. And I've been telling him what, what's been going on and gripes and complaints and what I don't like, what I do like. And he told me, he was like, you know what, man? You might as well go ahead and take Hornady, they truck back while you in Birmingham. And he was like, you never know the next time you're going to have the opportunity to drop that truck off. So he was like, you might as well go ahead and drop that truck off while you down there and call PNS back and see if you can start orientation Monday. Cause my load delivered in Birmingham on Friday. And I was like, okay, I was like, you know what? That makes sense. That makes sense, man. So that's what I did. I took my load to Birmingham. And then it was like so crazy. Y'all know I had that, that Peterbilt. It was so crazy. I blew a tire out. Going through Tennessee on my way to Birmingham. Blew out a tire. <laughs> Blew a tire out. Got to Birmingham. Got unloaded. Pulled out from um pulled out from the coast on E. Like I didn't I didn't know what was going on. It's like I couldn't take my truck out of first gear. Excuse me. I was like, I was like, what the hell going on with my truck? I pulled out the yard, couldn't get my truck out of first gear. It was a manual. And so I pulled over on the side of the road and I, and I heard air, I heard air leaking out. I'm like, man, where's this air coming from? I, I didn't know what the hell was going on. And so I put the brake on. I got out, looked around, didn't see nothing wrong. I uh, went back there, checked my airlines out. And because actually when I called in the maintenance, maintenance was like, you got your airlines crossed up. That's what the problem is. I said, ain't no way my airlines crossed up. I just drove like 600 miles from Chicago. So I, I, I kept messing around with it. And I was like, you know what, man? Ain't nothing I can do. I'm like, yo, y'all got to send a maintenance man out here or something. So they sent the maintenance guy out there. And uh maintenance guy checked it out. I blew out a brake chamber. My brake, my brake chamber blew out somehow. I, and and from, from what my other buddy told me, named Jimmy, Jimmy told me it blew out because I didn't set my trailer brake while I was getting unloaded. I, I, and I never set my trailer. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. You know, some of y'all that might have, y'all got more experience than me. You know, maybe maybe that was the case. But ever since that day, Jimmy told me that every time I get loaded and unloaded, I set my trailer brake. A lot of times I don't set it. But maybe that's maybe that's what blew the brake chamber out. So anyway, this video is 14 minutes right now. I'm about to go ahead and wrap it up. So that's pretty much why I left Hornady right there. I left Hornady because I wasn't making any money on the dedicated route. They put me over the road. They didn't have the freight to keep me rolling hard. And I'm gonna tell you right now what I love about PNS already. Man, PNS, that flex, that flex dispatch that they that they tell you about when, when they recruit you. Hey, that shit is the truth, man. It, that's, it's the truth. When they call you, when they call you, they they I haven't I haven't got to, I haven't I have not had a situation where I've only had one load to pick from. They always so far, I've always got a pick between two or three loads. 
and they'll tell me, my dispatcher will call, she'll tell me where the first load is going, where it's picking up at, she'll tell me where the second one's going, yada yada, what, what this one is paying, what this one is paying, if, if you have to tarp this one or if you don't have to tarp it, and yeah, I, I don't I don't know these freight lanes, you know, I got to learn these freight lanes, so when I, be, when I have my own truck, I, I know a little more, but uh, I just I just let her pick really. I, I put very little input into where I go. I just cause I came from Melton, man. Well, we didn't have no choice where we was going. All we know at Melton was just to run. So when she sends me these loads, the only one I actually picked for myself was when she gave me one that had a two a.m. delivery. I, I turned that one down. I said, Nah, I, I don't want that one. I take the one that delivers from seven to ten. And so, uh, yeah, that flex dispatch, man, it really works. And then, like, right now, this weekend, Monday, when I came back on board Monday, she asked me if I planned on staying out over the weekend. I told her, yeah, I want to stay out over the weekend. But, yes, no, Thursday, she told me Thursday, she was like, we don't have anything to, to, for you to run with over the weekend. So, she was like, I don't, I don't have no other option but to get you a load going back home. So it was either I took a load going back home or I just sat at a truck stop somewhere for the weekend. So I'm like, yeah, I, I'll go home. So yeah, you can't beat that, man. That load I got right now, that sheet rock, I got to drop it off Monday. Um, When I dropped that load off for, for, for this, for last week, once I dropped that load, um, I'll be grossed right at 1500 for the week. So I'll probably bring home about $1,100. So, if you can make $1,100 in five days and still go home on the weekend, hey, you winning, man. You winning. You can't beat that as a company driver. You can't beat that. I got, hey, I, I, I would rather, I would rather grow sixteen or 1800 but, uh, you know, this maybe next weekend, maybe they might have something that'll run me over the weekend. But this weekend, they didn't have nothing. Hey, hey so I'm fine with that. That's what I love about PNS already. I'm going to stay at PNS. I'm going to do my 90 days. I'm going to try to go the lease purchase route. Hey, even even if I don't actually buy the truck for PNS to stay long enough to buy it, I'm going to try the lease purchase out just so I can have that income coming in my into the bank. You know, just to build up a little bank history. I'm already in the process of uh, getting my LLC formed. Somebody said something to me about uh, nice visions transportation. Uh, no, nah, I didn't name it that. I'll tell you what I did name it, though. Uh, I'm still waiting on the state to approve it, because, you know, the state can reject it. But I, I filed it on Ink File, and no, nobody else had the name, but, and, and, you know, it's still up to the state. So the state has to process it first. But it ain't Nice Vision Transportation. It's, it's Nice Vision's Motor Group. That's what it is. Sound fancy, don't it? <laughs> hey, y'all watch and learn, man. Y'all watch. Your boy's going to be great. Hey, y'all watch, man. I got a hell of a plan. All I got to do is grind it out. Grind it out. Get this time under my belt. Hey. Hey, my time is coming, man. It's coming. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. once I get that back, I go ahead and uh, go to the bank, open up my business account, start, start depositing money in so I can start building my little, my history with the bank, you know, so... Later on down the line, I'm, I'll probably go through the bank and get my own truck or whatever. Whatever route I choose to go, that's going to be discussed at a later time. But as of right now, I'm just going to company drive this PNS flatbed, old Freightliner. Hey, I'm going to keep driving it. One thing I know how to know, one, one thing I know how to do besides run my damn mouth, I know how to flatbed. <laughs> After I get this haircut today, I'm going to the movies. I'm going to see Avengers. Endgame. That's what I'm going to do today. <laughs> I still got to see uh, Captain Marvel. I still ain't watched it. I'm going to tell y'all what I'm going to do. After I get my haircut, I'm going back to the house. I'm going to watch it on my phone. I got to watch Captain Marvel before I see Avengers Endgame. I've been, I've been, I've been new I needed to watch it, but I just ain't watched it. I got to see that one first before I see the Endgame. You know that you know the movies got clues leading to the next one. So yeah, I gotta see it, man. And I'm doing that today before I go. My damn girl, she just gonna have to wait. 
she want she want to go to the movies early so we can get back early. That's fine. I'm gonna watch that damn uh, Captain Marvel. If she want if she got something to say. Nah, I'm just playing. Just playing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna watch that damn movie before we go. I know that. I ain't even in the cup. I ain't, I, I ain't even in the truck. Still, still got the pilot mug. Pulling up at the barbershop right now, gang. This video will be up shortly. By the time this video uploads, I will be sitting at the movies. Eating popcorn. All right, gang. Hey, I love y'all, man. Love my subscribers. I got like 650 right now. Yesterday when I'm, oh, yeah. Yesterday I had like 620, now I got like 650. Hey, I love all y'all, man. Flatbed gang.